Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The only academy that gives you the credentials to become a certified tech and or certified inspector. So today let's talk about a serious situation we call hot skin. Now, hot skin is not what you think it is. Don't go looking that up. Don't type in hotskin.com. Oops. Don't know what you're gonna get. Now, hot skin is a situation inside our RV where we have electricity going to the outside of our rig. And if it's going to the outside of our rig, touching the outer skin of the rig, and we come by and we touch it, we can get shocked. What if the RV skin is made of fiberglass? Well, fiberglass is a resistor. It's not going to, it's gonna be the metal parts on your RV. So when we're talking the outer skin, anything that's metal, the steps are metal. The frame is metal. All the screws holding in you know, parts of the walls, those are metal. This is why it's a serious situation. I want to talk about when we might be able to get that, when it actually occurs, and some of the things that we can do to prevent it. Most of the time where we get hot skin is when we actually take our rig over to someone's house and we are plugging in, we're taking our regular power cords, we're putting on these adapters, breaking that down to that 15 amp outlet. And if we plug directly into that house, the situation in that house may show up on our rig. You see inside your house, you got your breaker panel box and your breaker panel box is actually separated in three different portions. You got your hot legs, you've got your neutral bar and you have your ground bars. Well, electrons need to go home in order for them to do work. They need to have a path home. Typically that's on the neutral bar coming back. Inside the homes, and a lot of homes just with code, what happens is the neutral bar and the ground bar are connected together. Not a big deal until someone comes in that house and somehow reverses the polarity at one of the outlets. If you want to find out about reversing polarity, maybe another time I will talk about it. But this is going to get long and boring if I talk about it now. If we plug into that house and we have reverse polarity situation, which means we've got our neutral electrified, connected to our ground, then the electricity shows up on the rig. Guys, it happens quite a bit. We see a lot of occurrences where someone walks up on the rig, touches it, and they just get a little shock. This is how we can pre uh, prevent it. If we actually carry an EMS, uh, energy management system, or also known as a circuit uh, surge protector, one of those that actually monitors the electricity. Part of the monitoring that will take place is, is it will look for hot skin situations, reverse polarity situations, it will look for a floating neutral or a floating ground. Any of those occasions, what will take place is that that monitoring device will actually cut the power to your rig and actually stop it. Now, if you don't have one of these uh, surge protectors slash EMSs, you can also just check with your multimeter or use a GFCI tester. You don't even have to know how to use your multimeter, just a GFCI tester if you're plugging it into the little 15 amp outlets. <laughs> if you wanna spend $300, $400 on a surge protector or an EMS, absolutely do, and that's something I do recommend. But if you don't have that, at least test, at least test that outlet with a GFCI tester, and it will let you know whether you have reverse polarity. If you wanna be able to fix the majority of the problems on your ring, or let's say you wanna open up a business, become a certified inspector or a certified RV technician, Head over to our website at nrvta.com, click on programs, and get started today. Does it stop jiggling? Yes. All right. If you don't get two amber, uh, two amber lights, if you don't, hmm. let's do that again. What if my skin is made of fiberglass? Well, if your skin's made of fiberglass, how do you move? It's for the basics out there. Now, if you want to go on beyond that and spend 300, 400 bucks on a, on a, um, well, hell, what's it called again? Any other instant questions from the audience? The night before, we had a pretty big thunderstorm. It was pretty major. A um, lot of wind involved. And um, we got up like any normal day, went about our morning routine. She was still in her um, pajamas and barefoot. And so we'd been in and out of the rig several times. and. Uh, and then uh, Maddie went outside and she went down the stairs and when she got to the bottom of the stairs, she just started freaking out, like just coming unglued. I've never seen her act like that. 
I, it, it felt like my whole body was asleep because it was like that tingly feeling that like I get in my hands or my feet or my legs, but it was like hurting a little bit. And it, it just felt like my whole entire body was asleep. It, it, she was stuck still, frozen. just frozen there. And so we were asking her questions, both, both of us were. And she reached out and grabbed the screen door. As soon as she touched the, soon as she touched the screen door, man, her hand came flying off of that. She goes, it's that. Then I knew. And Dick and I looked at each other and we're like, that's hot skin. <laughs> so we both went outside perfectly fine because we're in tennis shoes. <laughs> so we went outside and then what did you do? I was touching metal steps and the door and everything. Nothing was shocking me. I put my hand on the ground and touched the steps and zap nailed me and that's what she was feeling because she had socks on her she's barefoot, barefoot actually. yeah and yeah. went to check the emergency protective system filled up with water and it should have tripped and cut power to our unit it did not 